Hello developers, welcome to day 23 of the 30 days of JavaScript challenge. Today presents another opportunity for us to tackle challenges and enhance our understanding of JavaScript concepts. Let's dive in and make the most out of this learning journey. Today's challenge says, write code that enhances all arrays such that when you call the array.groupby method on any array, it will return a grouped version of the array. And this array that group by method takes in a, a callback function fn. Then it continues and says that a grouped array is an object where each key is the output of this callback function and each element of that array called with that callback function fn. And each value is an array containing all items in the original array with that key. So you know that the output will be an object with keys and value pair, you know that an object should contain key and value pair, and each key will be at the output of this callback function. So we'll call this callback function with the items of the, the given array to get the, the keys. Then we'll store th those keys to this object that will, will give us output. Then each key will have the values, and each value of each key should be an element, should be an item of the original array. So we'll see in the example how we can do that. So it continues and says that the provided callback function will accept an item in the array and return a string key. That's what we've discussed here. Then the order of each value list will be the order of the items appear in the array. Any order of key is acceptable. So they accept any order of key as long as the order of the item should be as they appear in the original array. Then you are asked to solve it without using this group by function. Okay, there's an example here. For example, where the input array is an array of objects, and the first object has the key ID with the value 1. The second object has a key ID also with the value 1 also. Then the third element, it's an object also with the key ID and the value 2. Then the, F, the callback function fn, it's a function that takes an item of that array, then returns the item.id. So if you if you call this array with this function, it should return one, one, and two. Because each item will be passed to this function, and you'll think that this function returns the ID of that item. Item.id is the ID, like this in this case, one. Here also, one, and this third element, two. Then I tell that the output will be an object. You've already seen that the output should be an object with the keys. You have already seen that here the, the unique keys are two, because it's one and two. So this the first key will be 1, and the second key will be 2. This one, it's a duplicate of this, and so it'll just be 1, 1 key. And these elements will be stored in the same key. So you'll see there'll be a key of 1, which is an array of two elements. That is, this first element of the original array, and this second element of the original array. Then the second key will be 2, which will contain an array of one item. That is the, this last element. So that is how you, this solution expects us to do. So you can just confirm another example so that you can be familiar with it even better. So here the input array is an array of arrays. So this is the first element of that array. This is the second element. This is the third element. And the input function, that this function fn, the callback function, is responsible to give us the, the keys. So this function takes, it takes in a list. In this case, this. Then returns the, that list index 0. In short, it returns the first item of that list. So in this case, this, in this first iteration, it will return, in this first item, it will return 1. So the key will be 1. In this also, it will also return 1 as the key. Also, in, also this, the third one, it will also return 1. So you just have only one key of string 1. That's why you can see the output is just an object containing one property of the key 1 and the value an array containing all the elements of uh, or orig original in there that were present in the original array. So that is supposed to do. Then here you can see the input array. It's just an array of numbers 1 to 10. Then the input function, it takes in any number n, then returns a string. That number is greater than, returns n greater than 5, but as a, then you convert that output as a, as a string. So you, know, you have already seen in the previous challenges that if you use this comparison operator, you, you get a, a boolean. So in the first iteration, it will be is 1 greater than 5. 
that is false so you'll get us the the first key will be a string of false two the same thing three the same thing four the same thing and also five there the same thing so this first five all of them will have a key of string false then the rest five will have a key of string true because six is greater than five so it will return true then that true will be converted into a a string and that will be our key of our object as you see that our, out, our output is an object with two keys the first one is true the other one is false and they say that the order of, of the keys does not matter so if you start with false or true or true or false doesn't matter so that is the challenge for today and the constant are the length of the array should be between 0 and 10 power 5 then fn should always return a, a string so i believe I've, I've explained much about this problem so let's just go straight to the solution in this challenge we are required to create a method that can be called on any array and will return a group version of the array so in short we're just adding a method to the array prototype yesterday we saw all array methods are present in the array prototype and if you want to create a new method you can just add it in the array prototype and we did that yesterday so if you don't know about array prototypes you can check yesterday's video and you, i'll put the link in the description so to add a new method in the array prototype you just write array then dot prototype then dot the name of the method in this case group by like that then it's a function like that then we know that since this is a method we'll always have to call it with an object you know that to call a method you have to have an object so in this case the object will be an, an array and we'll use the dot syntax to call this method so it will be something like array then dot then the name of the method in this case group by so that is how we'll call this method this array should be the object not the the class the object like that the array that we we'll have created then dot group by then we know that to access in this method inside here we can use the this keyword as and this is representing the instance of that object that will be called on this method that is what this is and we discussed in detail about this in yesterday's video so i'll just continue so what you have to do here you have first to get the the keys and the this method takes in a callback function fn so i'll just put there fn and this fn is responsible to give us the the keys so fn returns a string and that string is will be the keys of this of the returned object so the first thing you have to loop through the array so you can use any method to loop through the the array but at the end of the day you want to get an an object so you can use the for loop to loop through, to loop through the an array then first you check if the then you know that to loop to get the keys you'll call this function the items of that array to get the keys then you'll check if the key exists if the key exists you add the element in that existing key and if the key does not exist you create a new key then you start adding elements to that new key like that so you can use a for loop or since you know about the reduce method you can just use the reduce method to make our life even simpler so i'll just use the reduce method and you know that the reduce method it accepts a callback function and the start value of the accumulator then it, it, it returns a, a single value so it takes in a callback function and the start value of the accumulator and this callback function of the reduce so i'll just create the function it's like this this callback function takes in the accumulator item index and array but in this case we don't use the index and array you are just interested in the item and the accumulator so what you have to do you have to first you have said you have to get the keys so to get the keys you have to call this fn callback function fn this is outside here you have to call it each item of the of the array i know that this item here represent each item of the array because this will be looping so i'll call fn with each item like that i know that this one will return a, a key so i can just save this to a variable i'll say const key like that and the start value of this reduce function i'll put it an empty object because we want, at the end of the day you want to return an object so we'll be adding values to this object in this case we'll be adding key value pair because that's what we'll be doing and this is we'll be adding values to that then at the end of the day you want to return this object so i'll just put my return statement here because that's what we expect at the end of the day 
this one this all this will return an object and that object is what we want to, to return so i'll just put a return statement there like that so yeah so after getting the key i'll call i'll iterate through the array then i'll call the fn callback function fn with each item of the array to get the key so if i get the key i'll have to check if the key exists if the key exists so i'll say if so if the key exists i have to push the array to the corresponding key and if i have to push the array item to the corresponding key and if the key does not exist i'll create a, a the, i'll create the the key so i'll check if this accumulator has that key of key or i'll check if it does, if it does not have it so i'll say if this one is falsy if this one this key is not there so i'll just put a note here if it's not there so if it's not there i have to add to to create that key so i'll just say accumulator key and i'll create it and initialize it to an empty array because you know that each key in this example here, you can just confirm in this example, each key, the value is an array. That's why I'm in initializing this key to an empty array. Then if the key is there, so I'll put else, or even if it's there or not there, you at the end of the day, you just want to push it. You have to push the, the, the value to the key. So at the end of the day, I'll just say something like accumulator of index key dot push the item and that's so this way i'll have solved the challenge because first i'll iterate through the the array then call each item of the array with this fn then i'll store that you know that this will be a, will be a key then i'll store those key to this variable key then i'll check if the key exists if the key does not exist i'll initialize it to, with an empty array and if it exists, I'll just push the item to the corresponding key like that. Then at the end of the day, I'm to return the, I'll return the accumulator. In this case, this accumulator is the, is the grouped, the grouped object. So yeah, you can just test this if it works. So I'll test it with this example one. So example one, this is the input array. So I'll just copy this input array. So I'll just say something like const then i paste that then the fn is this one here so i'll just ah i'm using example two no problem this is example two but no problem i'll just say something like const then i paste that function there so if i call this array so i'll call this array it's called array so i'll say array like that this is the name of this array that i've defined up here dot group but then i'll call it with fn i expect this one to return a, a, a grouped object so i'll just log this so that you can confirm that and if i run this code i expect to see this output there so let's let's wait for it in the console so to see if i'll get this output it will be an object with two keys so you can see it's an object of one key that is one then each key will be the value will be an array of the existing arrays and that's that's what we expected so maybe you can try the example one where is example one example one was the array was this one so i'll just replace this array with this array up here like that paste there then this function also has changed so i'll just copy that function and paste it here then still i'll just be calling it the same way so i'll just run this code I expect to see an object with two keys that is one and two and one should contain two items i think there's an error there's an error saying that fn is not defined so let me check saying oh i i, I spelled it wrong this will be fn not n so i've created that error fn so if i run this code now i think it should be fine example one or is it the output yeah you can see indeed example one my output is an object of two keys the first key is this one one with the with a value an array of id one and id two the second key is two with the value of an array of one object 
So that is what we expected, and that is the solution to this challenge. So I can maybe I can challenge you to just write this function, this code again using the the for loop. But that is it for this video. See you in the next video. Peace out.